Now our characters in the book are George and Lenny. Um, they are down and out migrant workers uh, in the California of the Great Depression of the 1930s. And George, as we see, is the more intelligent of the two, and Lenny is the large, uh, learning disabled man that travels that travels with George. You're a crazy I, bastard. I forgot to. What did I try not to? Then I forgot. I spend all my time telling you things, and you forget them. I remember about the rabbits. Hell with them rabbits. That's all you can remember. Okay. Listen, this time, don't forget, we went into Murray and Reddy's, and they give us work cars and bus tickets. George, I remember that now. George, I ain't got mine. I must have lost it. You never had none. I got both of them. You think I'd let you carry your own work car? Well, I thought I... And we wonder, or perhaps uh, we might wonder, um, what it is that keeps these two together. Uh, what does George need with this uh, large, slow person that he travels with and protects? It seems at, at times that the book is uh, really about uh, Lenny and George's protection of Lenny. But we do come to understand that, that George gets something very important in return from Lenny. George? George? You want. Dude, I was only fooling. I don't, I don't want no ketchup. Here you can have some. Dude, I, I wouldn't eat no ketchup. I leave it all for you, and you could cover your beans with it. I wouldn't touch none of it. When I think of the swell time I could have without you, I go nuts. Never get any peace. If I was alone, I could live so easy. I could get a job and work and no trouble. No mess at all. And when the end of the month come, I could take my 50 bucks, I could go into town, I could get whatever I want. I could stay in a cat house all night. What do I got? I got you. You can't keep a job. Lose me every job I get. Keep me shoving all over the country all the time. That ain't the worst. You get in trouble, you do bad things, and I got to get you out all the time. Son of a bitch, you keep me in hot water all the time. Do you, you want I to go away and leave you alone? Where the hell would you go? I could go... I could go off in them hills down and find a cave. Yeah? How'd you eat? You ain't got sense enough to find nothing to eat. I find things. I don't need to. This nice food with ketchup. So if you don't want me, I'll go up in your Okay. Um, we know what their dream is. We find out what the dream of these two guys is in the very first in the very first chapter. Alfalfa field, you have a sack. And then you fill up that sack and you bring it in and you put it in the rabbit cage. You have a few pigeons that go flying around the windmill like they've done when, when I was a kid. It'd be our home. Nobody could can us. We don't like a guy, we just say, get the hell out. If a friend come along while we have an extra bunk, we just say, why don't you spend the night? And by God, he would. <laughs> you have a dog and a couple of cats, but you got to make sure them cats don't get them rabbits. We find out before terribly long what uh, the dreams are of the other people in the book. Um, some, some of the characters start to kind of latch on to George and Lenny's dream. Uh, Crooks, the, uh, the stable buck, and uh, the old man that we... I ain't much good with only one hand. That's why they give me a job sweeping. And they give me $250. Well, 
was I lost my hand. And I got 50 more saved in the bank right now. That's uh, 300. And I got 50 more coming at the end of the month. Suppose I went in with you fellas. That'd be $350 that I'd put in. Now, let me tell you something. I could cook. I could tend the chickens. I could hoe in the garden. Huh? How would that be? I got to we, think about that. We was always going to do it by ourselves. We were going to do it by ourselves. Well, now, wait a minute. I tell you what. I'd make a will and leave my share to you guys in case I kick off. Steinbeck was perhaps the best read American novelist of the 20th century. Among his great works were Grapes of Wrath, telling the story of the migration from Oklahoma to California during the Dust Bowl era, and how lives were utterly devastated by the uh, huge cataclysm of the Depression. Uh, also, East of Eden, set here in California, as most of Steinbeck's novels were. Steinbeck wrote uh, of Mice and Men at his home here in uh, Monte Serino, California, and uh, the rumor has it, in fact, that uh, the first draft of it was uh, eaten by Steinbeck's dog, um, which is, I guess, always a good excuse to give a publisher or a teacher. So what I'm hoping that you'll find in this book is um, the depth of the novel. Now, when you read the story, one of the things to wonder about is, why do we care? Um, Steinbeck somehow makes it possible for us to care about these lowliest of creatures, um, uh, a, a learning disabled man, uh, a migrant worker, uh, itinerant, uh, itinerant laborers. He makes it seem as though what happens to them is of such extreme importance that we sh and uh, what happens to their dreams is uh, of such extreme importance that we should care about it. As a matter of fact, he makes us look at and think about the dreams of all of these these lonely people. He's lonely and down, down and out and downtrodden people.